If you're like me and you just picked up the A6700, you're probably wondering what are the best settings to change as soon as you get it, and also what are the best photography settings. This is part one to my setting guide on the A6700, part two is linked below which is for video, but keep watching along as there is some essential settings that integrate between the two parts. So in this video we're going to be going through the full menu system of the Sony A6700 for photography and showing you some essential settings to change. I have put timestamps below so feel free to jump between the two videos and for a more full in-depth guide of the Sony A6700 I actually do sell a camera guide. On there we talk about how I expose my photos, how I expose S-Log3 and all my different custom buttons that I have for photography and videography. So if you want a full in-depth guide on the Sony a6700, jump in the link down below and pick up that guide, otherwise let's just jump right into it. First thing we need to make sure is that we have full battery, which I do, and also you need to make sure that you are in photo mode by switching the dial up here. I'm also going to switch the camera into manual. So clicking the menu, you come to Sony's new menu. Now this is called main one and I really like how they've done this because pretty much everything you need is on this front page. I wouldn't come in here to change your shutter speed, aperture, exposure compensation or your ISO. I would do that with your custom buttons and your wheels. But the first one is formatting card. So when you click this, it does format the card. I would only format the card if you know that you've backed up all of your footage. And I do format my cards before I do every shoot. So I back up my footage and then I'll format my card. Now moving on is the file format for your photo. Pretty much everyone shoots in RAW. I do advise you guys shoot in RAW. That will give you the most dynamic range, the most color science, and also being able to manipulate your exposure, recover shadows, and also change your white balance. In here, I actually have it selected to RAWs plus JPEGs. The only reason why I have JPEGs selected as well is because on my Mac, I can't actually see in preview what photos I've taken because the raw files do not show up. So just for file management, I'm just having JPEGs there so I know what images are what and what to copy and what not to copy. So we're gonna select raw plus JPEGs and then we're gonna go into raw file type. Now on the Sony A6700, you only have two options. One is lossless compressed and one is compressed. You don't have uncompressed like you do on the Sony A7IVs, the Sony A7R5, et cetera. So on the Sony A7IVs, I actually still click on lossless compressed. This is gonna give you a pretty medium file size compared to uncompressed, which is not available. And compressed is gonna compress that raw file into a smaller file. So I prefer just to get the most quality and the most dynamic range, resolution and color science. So I just click lossless compressed. For JPEG quality, I don't use JPEG, so I just keep this on default. Again, with JPEG image size, you can go in here and change the image size of your JPEGs between different megapixels. I just leave this on default. I don't use JPEGs. For aspect ratio, I highly recommend you shooting in three by two. That's the full width and height height of the sensor for photography. Uh, you can go in here and change it for different aspect ratios, but you can just really do that in post using Lightroom. And for drive mode, I found on Sony cameras for the way that I shoot, I just leave it in mid. Um, you can go into single shooting and you can do, this is where you'd go in to do your self timers, etc. If you want to take a photo of friends and family, put the camera on a tripod, switch it into self timer get your focus and away you go. But scrolling along here, you can go through the different um, continuous shooting. I find low is just too much, mid is just the best, high and high plus is just too much. Sometimes I switch into high plus when I'm doing an exit for a wedding, etc. but usually I'm just sticking on mid. Now you can actually put a TTL flash on the Sony A6700, but all of these I just keep in default. And then moving on to white balance, for photography, I do just shoot an auto white balance. I find Sony's do a really great job with their auto white balance, and I would just leave it on auto. I will fine tune it in Lightroom, and then I'll sync that scene so the white balance matches between the rest of the photos. And then moving on to focus mode, this is what I recommend you just leave it in. I think it's best to leave it in autofocus continuous or AFC. Continuous autofocus is basically what I'm using right now where it's tracking my face and it's continuously keeping my face in focus. There is options of putting it in 
single shot AF, which is similar to Canon's one shot. For me, I just keep it in continuous AF or sometimes manual focus. And then for focus area, I only use two. I'm usually just on wide if I'm shooting a single subject. And if I am shooting multiple subjects or I want to grab the attention of one person, I will use this track expandable spot. And you can move this point, but I just keep it in the middle and you can just lock onto a point and half press the shutter and it will just keep that person or that subject in focus continuously. So now we're gonna move on to the rest of the Sony system. And I know this can be pretty confusing, but Sony do actually have everything color coded and in page numbers. So we're gonna start off with red, which is mainly for photography. And we're just gonna leave all of this in default because we actually have changed all of these settings in the quick main menu one. So we're just gonna scroll down. I know it is confusing that Sony do integrate photo with video, but that's just how it is. So moving down to the bottom of page one in the photography settings, we're gonna leave the color space as sRGB and also for lens compensation, for shading, chromatic aberration and distortion, we're gonna leave all of this in auto. And then skipping down from page two, we've already formatted the card. Um, we're gonna come into page three for the photography settings and we're gonna go into file folder settings. Now for me, I actually own four of these Sony cameras. So on my other cameras, I have them labeled as A1, A2, A3. And then this one is actually labeled as a6700 to go in and change that. You just click it and then you can put three different types of numbers or letters in here. So I'm just gonna leave it at A6700 and that way that I know which file came from where and what camera. And then for the folder name, I keep this in date form. You can put it in standard form, but I just find that if it's in date form, every day it will give me a new folder. So say I do a trip to Japan, and then on the 26th, I've got those photos. On the 27th, I've got some separate photos, et cetera, et cetera. And I keep the file number as default on series. You can go in here and create new folders. So if you're on working on new projects, I don't use this feature. I just find that I just organize my files after the shoot. And then the rest all the way down to page five, I leave everything on default. So in page five, this is where you'll come into your drive modes and your interval shooting. So for time lapses, um, for bracking settings, this is where you do your HDR photos. Um, so you can do your self timers, etc. do your bracketing order and your focus bracketing settings. That's getting pretty advanced. If you just wanna do some HDR photos, I find the best way is to go into the drive mode and then scroll down to continuous bracketing. You'll see that it's 0.3 and free images. That will give you a 0.3 under and then 0.3 over and then also meet it at zero. So you can use that in Lightroom to get an HDR image and you can easily just change the exposure. So usually I would just do one stop under, one stop over, one stop in the middle for free images and that would give me my bracketed images. So if I select OK, and before you do this, you'll just switch it to Aperture Priority. Um, you'd find your focus, take your free photos, and then it would give your three different exposures. So, so moving on to interval shoot function, this is for time lapses. So if you go in here, you just literally turn it on. And then my personal preference is I just keep one shot per second. And then the number of shots is 9,999. So basically it just keeps shooting until I turn it off or it runs out of battery or card space. You then edit your photos in Lightroom and then you just times it by your frames per second that you want. So if it's 25, you times it by 25 and now you have a time lapse. I don't really do time lapses. Um, so I just leave this as off to continue to shoot as normal. So moving on to page six for the photography setting. I keep the silent mode settings in default. I do switch it to mechanical shutter. It might be an electronic shutter if you did just pick up this camera. I highly recommend you just using the mechanical shutter. Electronic shutter will give you kind of like a rolling shutter effect and it kind of makes your photos like banding and really warped. I also do turn off the e-front curtain. Now you can lean this on and it won't really affect your photos. Leaving this in the default as on, it will actually give your shutter a longer life. So if you don't see the difference between electronic front curtain being on and off, I would recommend just leaving it on and having a longer life for your camera. And then the rest, I keep it as just auto. And then moving into the image stabilization on page seven, 
Um, you've got steady shot, I leave that on in default. And for the steady shot adjustment, I leave that as auto. If you attach a manual lens onto this camera, it will automatically switch into manual and then you'll manually have to change your focal length for the IBIS to work efficiently. So I'm just gonna keep this in auto because basically for photography, I only really use uh, autofocus lenses. Moving on to the last page of the read menu, page nine. I do have the grid live display on and the grid that I use is rule of thirds. So you can go in here and choose a bunch of different rules. I just prefer the pretty typical rule of thirds. Now we're moving on to the pink menu and the first one you're gonna see is bulb timer settings. Now this is for astrophotography if I'm not mistaken. The longer shutter you can do is 30 seconds and then it goes into bulb mode. Then you'll go into bulb mode and then change the timer. So you might wanna do a, you know, a 90 second or so forth, you know, and then you'd have to turn the bulb timer on. So if you want to do like a three minute exposure, that's where you would go into the setting. But I'm just going to leave it as off because I don't really shoot Astro. Now moving on to ISO, I would not change your ISO in here. That would just take too much time. Going back into the camera, I just have this wheel set as the ISO, so I can just change my ISO quickly on the fly. When I'm shooting in manual mode, when I shoot aperture priority, I just leave it in ISO automatic, and I use my exposure compensation, which is up here to change the exposure. For ISO range limit, I leave this as default. And then this is a really important one for aperture priority or any other automatic settings. Um, I keep the ISO auto minimum shutter speed to one over 250. So basically all that means is that I'm in aperture priority mode right now. And whatever I change my shutter speed or my exposure compensation to, you'll see that it won't go below one over 250. So if I'm like plus five stops over, I'm now at ISO 500, at 5000, sorry, but my shutter speed's still one over 250, which will give you a very sharp image for portraiture. Moving down to exposure compensation, I wouldn't go in here to change your exposure compensation. I would choose a custom dial, which we will show you shortly. And I keep the exposure step compensation as the default as 0.3. For the metering modes, I just keep this as the default. And then also for the flash mode, I keep all of this as a default as well. White balance we talked about, I keep this as auto. I keep the priority set and auto white balance as standard. For the shutter or auto white balance lock, I keep off. It just means that as you're clicking the shutter, it's continuously changing the white balance where if you turn this to on, it just means it's gonna, when you're just about to push the shutter, it'll stop changing the white balance. So. You know, it doesn't really matter because you're just going to sync it in post anyway. For the color tone, I leave all of this in standard and I make sure that my picture profile is off. If you shoot in a picture profile, I don't think it affects the raw files, um, but you can bake in like an S-log free flat profile look into your JPEG photo. So I just leave this as off for photography and pretty much all in default. And then moving on to the Zebra display, I think this is a really great feature on Sony cameras for photography. I do have the Zebras set on and I have a custom function menu of custom two and lower limit of, sorry, 106 plus. Now that means that it's basically showing that anything overexposed will come up as Zebras. So you can see that I've not lost any detail here, but as soon as I go a little bit higher, you can see I'm starting to lose, lose detail in the brightest part of the image, that being whites, turning this white wall into complete white. So when I'm out shooting, say, a landscape and the sky is looking a little bit blown out or the clouds, I can see that accurately and I can just bring my exposure down and save that detail in the clouds. Now moving into the focus menu and we're going to keep it in continuous autofocus and the rest here I'm just going to keep in standard and default settings as these generally you do not want to change again we're in wide autofocus and the rest i just keep in default i mainly do shoot humans so i keep it in human and i keep the right and eye select and automatic this is great if you are doing say a portrait shoot in a studio and they're doing, I don't know, maybe like a lipstick and you just want to keep shooting one side of the face and you just want this eye to stay in focus, you would just choose the right, the left eye. In here, I just keep everything as default. In playback, I leave everything in default except for one. And I find this very annoying for photography and that is the playback option. 
for whatever reason for Sony cameras when you get it and you're using the continuous drive mode, it will put all of those photos in a folder for whatever reason. Um, so if you keep display as group, it is default as on. If you turn this to off, I'll show you what the on looks like. And I just take a bunch of different photos. You'll now see that it's grouped all of these photos in a folder. You have to go into the folder to see each of these eight photos that I just took. So if you go back to page seven and you turn off display as group back to off, you'll now see that you can scroll through all of the different images without being in a folder. And I don't know why this is default as on and I just find that super annoying. So the rest of the playback and the network, I just keep all of this as default settings and moving into the last menu here, which is the yellow, which is your setup. Uh, this is where you'll change your language, time and date, NTS and power. Now that's really important for videos. So make sure you go check out part two for video settings about that, but it does not apply to photography. You can reset your settings here. You can actually load your settings onto an SD card. So if you buy two of these cameras for whatever reason, you can set up this camera, load all of these settings and then import them into another Sony camera. And then into my custom dial settings, this is where I do have all of my custom dials that I do use the most. And I don't use the function menu or that new swipe menu that I'll show you in a second. So number one is this little button, which is C1. That's for my white balance that turns on and off my tracking point. And then when I do want to fo manually focus using manual focus, I do have manual focus magnify as C3. This number one is focus standard. So that means that my tracking point will go back to the center or turn off the tracking. I use the left joystick to change the drive mode. And then for ISO, I keep it in default as the right. And then for number four, which is exposure compensation, I actually have this as focus area. So these two buttons are the ones that I use the most, the drive mode and changing the focus area. So if we go into my camera, I can quickly just click this and go to tracking. And then you have to push the middle button on this camera because it doesn't have a joystick. And then you can go back to wide. If I want to change my back to single shooting or I want to go to change my continuous shooting speed, I can do that. And then these two top buttons up the top I use for uh, videos, so I don't use them for photography. And then the last one here is actually pretty important. So if you click this box here, you can separate your manual mode from your aperture priority and your shutter priority and have a different layout for photos. So I do click this and you can see that number one, which is my front dial, that's TV so that it is shutter speed. Number two is up here, so that's how I change my aperture. And then the wheel at the back is my ISO. But for other modes like aperture priority, shutter priority, I actually have this front wheel as my exposure conversation because that's the one that I use the most. And I find I love that front wheel. I keep my aperture here and then I change my shutter speed here. I don't need to change my ISO because I leave that in auto. I do need to change my shutter speed when I'm using shutter priority. In here, you can change the function menu for photo and video. I don't use the function menu as I pretty much just use all of my custom buttons for photography. And then the rest scrolling down, I do leave to uh, the default settings. So moving down to page seven, this is actually, there's a couple of things you need to change in here. On the first one is your finder monitor. So I just keep this on manual and monitor because I don't actually use a viewfinder. I've come from film cameras and seeing through an optical viewfinder and I just don't like EVF. So I just use the screen. Uh, in here, I would recommend changing this to sunny weather. This will make the screen the most brightest it can be. I do shoot outside a lot and I find the screen keeps up well in very sunny days. So I don't use a viewfinder. So this is where you would find the viewfinder brightness. Um, and the rest is in default. All of this is in default and a lot of this is for video. So for photography, you don't need to know. But on page nine, this is actually a really important one and that's to change your auto power temp 
off to high. In default it is in standard and when you actually buy this camera it does ask you do you want to put this in high. If you leave it in standard you will find that these Sony cameras do overheat quite easily and that's pretty much the whole backlash against Sony. Everyone's like oh they overheat but a lot of people don't know that settings. So make sure that, that this is in high and your camera will not overheat. And then the rest of the yellow system is 100% for video and I just leave it in default for photography. I want to quickly add that I don't use this quick touch menu. Um, I just to swipe it away you just swipe it that way and to get it back you can swipe it here. I just don't need any of this you know like I use all my custom functions so clicking this one here you can change continuous shootings but I can just click this button and it's done. You know I don't want to have to swipe swipe and then you know I don't think that touch functions on um, cameras should be a thing. I just have my custom buttons. So guys, that's it for the photography settings of the A6700. We did brush over a few things. If you want that full in-depth guide, it is linked down in the description down below. And if you want to watch part two, that will be linked right here. And that is more in-depth for video settings. So, but otherwise guys, if you did enjoy that, make sure you do subscribe. If you like the way that I edit my photos, I do actually sell presets, of course. And we will see you next time.